In this video, we are going to set up continuous deployment for our application, which is an incredible way to improve development workflow and productivity uh, to pretty much any app. Now, what continuous deployment means is that whenever we merge to master or push code directly to master, that's going to automatically get deployed out to production. If we set up other branches like a staging branch, whenever we force push something to staging or merge something to staging, that'll automatically go out to a staging environment, automatically get deployed all the time. It's a great way to manage your deployments. You merge it to master, it's out on production. So master's always in sync with production. And so to set this up will be pretty quick and easy. We're going to use Semaphore CI to do it, which is very fast, very easy to work with. And you can follow along with the readme here. Now we're going to give you two examples in this video. We're going to show you how to do static content which is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So for that, I have this sample index HTML, which just says, hello world. And when we make changes to this, that will automatically go out. And I'll also, also show you how to do it uh, for web applications like Node.js or something else that requires kind of some startup commands when you actually push the code to your server. So here we go, let's go and get started. Our first step is we're gonna create an SSH key. That's going to allow Semaphore to securely connect to our server and run some commands there. So let's go SSH keygen C and you just give it some sort of identifier. I'll just say Semaphore. And then we choose where the file is. So I'm going to call that exactly this folder here that they want. And then I'm just going to call it idrsa.semaphore. Oh, it's a unique key and I'm not going to use a passphrase. That's important. So this created idrsa.semaphore and idrsa.semaphore.pub. So let's go ahead and copy the contents of that public key. Uh, we can use cat for that. idrsa.semaphore.pub. We're going to pipe that to pbcopy. There we go. Now it's copied to our clipboard. And now I'm going to go ahead and paste that off screen so we have it. And we can go ahead and SSH into our server. Root add, and that is 45.55.153.229. So now we're in our server. We just need to paste that pub key into authorized keys. So we can do this really easily. We can go echo and then paste it. There's the pasted. And I'm going to close those parentheses. So I basically wrapped it in parentheses. Two arrows. So I'm going to append it to the SSH authorize keys file. So I now appended that in. So if there were any authorized keys, I didn't erase those. Or you could just edit this authorized keys folder and paste file and paste that in yourself, however you like to do it. So on this server right here, let's go to the IP address. You can see it says 404 not found. I'm running Nginx and it's set up for static HTML content, which means that it's going to look in the USR user share nginx HTML folder. Of course, I have a typo there. So if there were an HTML folder here, that would be my HTML website. I could make that directory. And I could echo a file in there. Let's say OK. So let's make index.html. Whoops, I saved that in the wrong folder. Let's go at echo HTML. Let's put in the HTML folder. There we go, now we have an HTML file, index.html, and it says OK. So any changes to that index.html will real time be changed on Nginx. So what I'm going to do is I'm, let's go ahead and remove that HTML folder and let's clone our repository straight on in there. Now, if you were doing this and this was a private repository, you couldn't just get clone it. You'd need access somehow. So to get access, you simply go to your settings and you add a personal access token you can generate a new token. Let's call it semaphore token. Give it access to our private repositories. Now that token can be used whenever we're cloning. I could copy and paste that, uh, but I'm not going to use it because this is a public repository. Everyone has access to this. Um, I'll show you in a minute how you would use that token. So now all I can do is I can go to the cloner download and you'll want to use not SSH. You'll want to use HTTPS. So that's important. Let's go ahead and copy that. And now I can get clone that into the HTML folder. And if you had a token, if this is a private repository, you'd put that token there, whatever that token is, at github.com. So token at github.com, and you'll have access to your private repository. So let's go ahead and clone that. Boom, that's done. Now if I refresh my site, 
hey, there's my hello world, which is index.html. So now what Semaphore CI will do is it will, whenever changes happen on master, it will SSH into this server. It will tell Git to force pull down the latest of master. If any changes were made on the server at all, it's going to automatically overwrite them. And I have those commands right here in this one file called deploy.sh. We're going to CD into this folder. We're going to fetch all and we're going to reset hard to origin master. Simple enough. So basically Semaphore is just going to SSH into the server and run these three commands. Whatever's in deploy SH will get run. So let's switch gears, go over to Semaphore and get that going. And that'll be really, really easy. So let's go to add new project. We'll pick our user and this is called example deployment. Example deployment. We'll build off the master branch. And this will take a minute to just analyze my project real fast. There we are. Now it noticed the Node.js code in there because if you remember, I have a Node.js project in at the same time. That's okay. All I have to do is say, no, we're not going to run npm install. We're not going to do that setup. Now, if there's a Node.js project or a project with dependencies, this would be where you'd run the dependencies command, uh, which in this case is npm install. I said, cancel, go away. Thank you. Um, and then npm test would normally be what you do to run test cases on Node.js. We're not going to do any of those, so let's just go echo OK and save that. Since this is just an HTML file, we don't need that. But that's where you change your Node.js settings. We can go ahead and build with these settings. And then there we go. It's going to automatically run the build. That's going to be simple enough. That's going to build. It's only going to take about eight seconds because we don't have any test cases that we're running. That's going to happen really fast. While that's going, let's go ahead and set up deployment now. So I'm back on my project and let's set up our deployment. We're going to scroll down and do a generic deployment and we're going to do this automatically. So every successful build, if it's on master, it's going to go out. This is going to build on the master branch. And what are our deploy commands? We're going to paste these two, which I have in the readme. Uh, we're going to say, hey, allow us to SSH into this server, which this will change to your IP address or your server name, your domain name. Um, and same right here, we're going to SSH, SSH in and we're going to run deploy SH. So whatever changes in deploy SH, we don't have to ever change our continuous deployment setup. And then we just need our private SSH key, which is that idrsa.semaphore, not .pub.semaphore. So let's go ahead and cat that. And we're going to pb copy that. That's copied to the clipboard. Let's paste it in. There we go. That's our private key. Now it, Semaphore will be able to SSH into our server. Let's just call this prod. I'll just call it production. Create that server and let's go ahead and deploy. Boom, let's, let's deploy index.html here or deploy all of that uh, straight out. It's setting up our environment and that's going to run our two commands and we will actually have a continuous deployment going. There we go, command one ran and command two ran. And it worked, uh, but you notice there's no changes. Let's go ahead and make a change to index.html and see just how long it takes for this to actually end up in production. Here we go, I'll just go edit it, hack it in straight here in GitHub's user interface. Let's add some exclamations. Let's say I'm feeling emotional today. There we go, I merged that. Let's go back to Semaphore CI and see what happens. You can see, there we go, a build is already queued up. That's going to start building here any second. And then it's going to deploy once that build is successful. While this is going on as well, I think it's important to note that Semaphore CI gave me a coupon for you guys. It's not a kickback coupon. I don't really get anything from it. Uh, but I told them I was doing a video and they said, hey, here, we'll give all your viewers a coupon. So I'm going to throw that coupon down into the description. So that way you can actually save some cash if you ever do need to use the, the more premium features of Semaphore CI with your company. Again, that's in the description. Thanks to them for that. Um, and there you go. The deploy is already going out. You can see that it's deploying and it's deployed. Do we have the exclamations? Absolutely. Yes, we do. That's excellent. Now, one thing worth pointing out is if you are doing Node.js, uh, let's go over to Node.js. There's a little bit more that you have to run. You don't simply do a git pull. You also have to start up your server. I'll go to my editor here. You don't just do a git pull. You actually start up your Node.js server, probably run an npm install. 
So the actual script looks something a little bit more like this for a Node.js application. Not much more complicated. Let's CD into whatever folder my app is in. Let's get fetch, get reset everything. Let's maybe do an NP NVM install if you use NVM to manage your Node version. Let's run an NPM install then and let's kick off the app, whatever you use to start your app. In this case, I'm using PM2. So I'd stop the app and then start the app and that's the only difference. This will totally work for a Node.js application as well. So as you can see, um, continuous integration, continuous deployment, not a scary thing, works really, really well. Uh, probably the biggest thing you have to get used to is when you're doing pull requests, you merge them down to master, they go out. Um, if you have a mistake and you have to roll back, roll back, uh, normally you're like, okay, let's push out that code and trigger the deployment manually. Well, in this case, you just revert the pull request, merge it to master, and then you essentially just did a rollback. You did it completely in GitHub. Every pull request can be reverted with a click of a button in GitHub. And so that's kind of the, the mental process you go through with reverts and quick rollbacks when you accidentally blow stuff up. That's usually the thing people are the most scared of with continuous deployment is, uh, what do I do when I have to roll back quickly? Well, you just make another pull request and merge it to master. It's really simple and it's awesome. It's so nice to not think about having to manually trigger deployments anymore. So that's continuous deployment in a nutshell. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.